decades. There's a viral video apparently on Reddit. The subreddit has the importance of anime fan service. Guys, can you guess by this picture what this is supposed to be? Good googly moogly, let's check it out. Anime as we know it today would not exist without- Don't lose your way. Don't believe me? Studio Gainax, which includes the creator of a little okay. series called Neon Genesis Evangelion. Gainax, uh, they did the Gundam shit. No, 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 Sunrise does a lot of Gundam shit and mech shit. Got their start by effectively creating the anime girl bunny suit. They started okay. all of this and then- I never watched any of these old animes because remember, all I do is a girl watching Naruto fucking One Piece and Bleach. They went on to make what basically what became the prototype for one of the most influential anime ever made. What is it? Oh, Akiba Made War! Shitty ass Moldby giving out copyright strikes, you know, prevents a lot of people from covering this series, but I did love episode one. We're talking about Evangelion. Gun, 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 gun Buster. Oh, okay. Gunbuster, Gunbuster is a legitimately interesting anime about interdimensional war into the cruel passage of time. Get Let me guess, how are you gonna get a bunch of horny kids to get interested in shit like this? You add a bunny suit on a girl. Guess what it's remembered for? It's exploration of the human psyche? Girl. No. It's girl. realistic use of modern physics? Fuck no, no one cares about that shit. They're just here to watch some fan service. No, what about a different- Yes! Oh my physics? goodness! What kind of physics was that? The rotational speed! No, what about a different Brrr. kind of physics? The jiggly kind. Gunbuster was uh, an innovator of anime titty jiggle physics. And that's what led to this. That's it. Studio Gainax modernized, sorry, popularized titty physics. And that's why they have such big success. This and all of this. And that's not even mentioning all of the fan service within Ava itself. No okay. fan service, no Ava. No Ava. And who knows what the anime industry would look like to So what is the moral of the story here so far? It means that it doesn't matter how good of a story you have, how complex character developments or the discussion you can have with these series. The only thing that matters is the fan service and the greater anime audience only cares about titty physics and could not care less about anything else. So the success of everything that came after Gainax is just grounded in degeneracy debauchery because the weebs are just degenerates. Gotcha. Today. I hate Evangelion. It's the most overrated anime of all time. Um, uh, well, it's, uh, it's a good thing that's not the only talking point. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! <coughs> Why people hate fan service? Sorry. <coughs> the reason that I hate fan service, and you'd be surprised coming from a guy like me that analyzes the gap between a girl's thigh and perhaps how much skin is being plumped out of the you know, the edge of the upper thigh. The reason that I hate fan service is whenever you give me a good story, whenever you give me such immersive story, you don't need to just pull out fucking titties and ass to suddenly break that immersion in order to appease these horny kids. Like, maybe they do. Maybe that's what gets the bottom line running, right? At the end of the day, sex sells. So that's why people, you know, use, utilize fan service to keep the horny audience from being engaged. If, if it wasn't there, then I guess people wouldn't care about the story. But for me personally, if I'm watching a show like High School DxD, I know what I'm getting myself into. If I watch a show like Gushing for Magical Girls, I know what I'm getting myself into. Etchy is built in. I'm fully expecting Etchy and I, and I embrace it. But some of the rom-com series, even like Roshi Daddy, for example, a lot of people I'm sure enjoy the episode one fan service of Kuze fucking, you know, grazing, you know, you know, Alias Clam. But to me, it's just like, sometimes... I feel like it's a little out of place. I get it why you need to do that. You want to create some kind of controversy or viral moment to, you know, anchor this show while it's trending and get a lot of eyes upon it. But that's one of the main reasons that I hate fan service where it just becomes breaking of immersion. And I feel like you don't really need that shit to tell a good story. Because this is what it does. It appeals like the male fantasy. No matter how you feel about yourself. I'm going to skip this section in, in case there is a reason spoilers. Hours and hours into research. I can safely say that every time I close my eyes now I see anime panties. I can safely say yes. That is the point. Jesus. The purpose of fiction is to appeal to fantasy. Don't yeah. worry, ladies and others. It's not like you've been forgotten, but I... <laughs> Blue Lock. Don't ever tell me that Blue Lock is not a yaoi show, bro. It's just a bunch of dudes, a bunch of feminine dudes just in... 
full body spandex running around, bro. Don't ever tell me that this is some actual shonen battle shonen, bro. It's just a yaoi lock. I will admit, anime does disproportionately sexualize females. And the well, yeah. And the reason? Because the biggest market of people who watch anime are a bunch of dudes. Do you think that a lot of dudes want to see man fan service? There may be a small portion. And within that small portion, they probably more want the traps and the fanboys, which most, you know, kind of aligns sort of towards the female fan service portion. But yeah, it's just the male audience is a bunch of men and they want to see titties. That's it. Reasoning for that is supply and demand. Yeah. Why is it all boys are idiots and so horny all of the time? Bitch, you would not be an iconic character if that wasn't the case for the boys. You are only a legendary icon in anime because the bunch of coomers literally rub it out for you. Don't act like you're fucking beyond the audience that built you up to where you are, Asuna. Time. What did I do? Listen, you can't exactly control what people want. I'm, I mean, I guess you... <laughs> there was a lot of Oshinoko stuff there. Let's just skip over that. But things are definitely leveling out. The most popular modern shonen, Jujutsu Kaisen, yeah. is known for... There's a lot of dudes, bro. I mean, there is Mei Mei for sure, right? But there's a lot of dude fan service in this show, man. Hot dudes, Correct. yeah. There's a lot. It's hot male characters. I am Yo, this shit was crazy. <laughs> this, I remember this episode, bro. Everybody and their mom put their face on this kid's face while Nanami was holding it up. The hair pull is crazy. And then if you lower the camera, you can also see Nanami's fucking bulge. Like, the belt is there. The fucking, he's like packed. Like, oh my God. Male characters. I am right there with you. <laughs> Jemmy! Jemmy, ooh, ooh, there she is. Right there with you, ladies. Jesus Christ. There's pretty much no argument to be made these days about the lack of well-written female characters. You would have to be insane to argue otherwise, which doesn't stop people. That being the case... <laughs> what is this? Wait, what is this? Doesn't stop. Anime's biggest problem, women. Women are bad and the thumbnail is just Anya with a smug look. <laughs> Makes you want to click on the video. I wonder what he said in the video. People. That being the case, why waste energy caring about this male fantasy bullshit. Look, listen, this is the only time these guys ever get to interact with the opposite sex, so just... just Give me some it. time. That was a joke, by the way. It's funny, because it's true! But fan service is everywhere, even where it doesn't make sense. And it distracts mm -hmm. from the plot. Yes, I'm telling you, it ruins the fucking immersion. Unless the fan service is supposed to be built into it, and you are fully aware that the fan service is going to be apparent, then I'm fine with it. But don't, like, fucking give me this whiplash of me caring about the stories and the characters, and suddenly you start groping a girl, and it's just like, well... We were just talking about how this girl's parents, you know, fucking wished a better life for her and how when they passed away that this girl is going to find a husband one day that's going to save her. But it just turns out that she just gets used as anal fucking jokes. Guess what? Adi Furata. Tio. Like, you can't build up these characters and have me actually care for them and then suddenly be reduced to just fan service. And on those points, I actually agree. Fan service is not its own sentient being. It is a literary device. It can be used well. It can be used very well. It can definitely be overused. And it can be used terribly. <laughs> Sex. What was, what, what was that? The fuck? He just punched her out. What was that? What anime is this where this dude punches this girl out? And it can be used <laughs> terribly. <laughs> Sex. Sex and sexual imagery are everywhere. That is not limited to anime. Right. K-pop. From cheerleaders to Abercrombie models to the 10 million trashy Netflix series that your sister watches. The point is that it's part of life. Why? Do Why? Because sex sells. Every one of us is ingrained within our DNA. Even, sure, maybe there's some outliers of people saying they're asexual. They feel the need to reproduce. They they will go awuga. They see something, it creates their limbic resonance go up, right? There's this function of your body that just you know yearns for that shit so when you see booba when you see hot six pack whoever you are it makes you get more engaged demonize it more importantly why demonize specifically anime even if you really hate fan service it is not i think a lot of the fan service that gets called out is a bunch of bullshit where for example i don't care if it's fan service where you're depicting like a milf in sexual situations but a lot of anime is grounded in like middle and high school girls
And whenever you start flashing their panties and doing some degenerate shit with that, I think a lot of the anime fandom, even like Lolicon shit too, right? Mostly Lolicon shit. That's why people fucking hate this shit. They see sexual depictions of potential minors and you can say it's just a fucking drawing. But let me ask you something. Literally talk it out loud. Say it to me. What is it a drawing of? It's a drawing of a prepubescent girl depicted in a sexual way. Don't fucking act like this drawing gives you a mental fucking gymnastics ways of avoiding the issue at hand here. It's fucking creepy. And that's why anime gets a lot of hate for it because they start to sexualize again these goddamn kids. Not that invasive. Anime is a vast medium. Believe it or not, there are more than just the major shonen, which, for your information, are aimed specifically at young boys. Yeah. Like, stop getting upset about shit like fairy tale and Naruto. <laughs> And check out some of these. Have you tried? Uh, Dungeon Meshi, Girls Band Cry was recent, uh, fucking Villain Saga, Oshinoko, there's some good animes here, basically just skip all the battle shonens. Like Fruits Basket? I've heard it's the Twilight of Anime. Miners. Jesus! No, not, not that way. Miners? Miners with an E. What about an O? Miners. There it is! Anime fan service, Doctor Disrespects Miners. You gotta be kidding me! Fucking fine. Very meta right now. Very meta. Oh, oh yeah, because anime is so much worse than Western live-action series. Okay, it is not my fault that Yoko Littner was arbitrarily age 14. And that's the problem, right? When you have a bunch of big titty girls and you're like, what? how old are they? They're usually over the age of consent. And a lot of people are like, well, hold the fuck up. In Japan, the age of consent is different. It's like 16 or some shit, right? Again, it's just a lot of people hate this shit because of how bad it looks just from like an optics right nothing is good about just being horny over like high school middle school girls now if you are like a high school or middle school kid that's a different story right but me i don't self insert myself as a fucking main character to a show where they're all fucking you know diddling around these kids like fuck no i just kind of like it's, it's an unfortunate fact of anime where it's just like, you know what, this is just part of the culture and I'm just here and I don't really imagine myself within their shoes, I'm just observing. Uh, but yeah, there is this thing called lollycon. It is bad. Mm. But it's also not real. But you can pretty easily... Here's my take with lollycons. And again, fuck you with your bullshit arguments about it's just a drawing. Drawing of what? I think that every lollycon is not a pedo. Right? I think that's a fair thing to say. But I also think that every pedo is a lollycon. That's it. It's just that simple. Avoid lollycon. And this video is not about that. This conversation's been had so many fucking times. Just yap, 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 yap. Sex sells? Absolutely. Absolutely it sells, and that's why it's so prevalent in media everywhere, not just anime. One of the earliest recorded examples of sexual advertising was Duke and Son cigarettes in 1885. They would what? put these, um, uh, um. <laughs> Damn, the standards were pretty low back then, but then again, you know, the nutrition and lifestyle and everything of, you know, people weren't very good back then, so I guess these are like tens uh, back in the day. Oh, boy, uh... Awuga, uh, awuga. Uh, oh my goodness. Show that? These cigarette cartons came with risque trading cards. Basically, wow. it was the first ever waifu gacha game. And it worked. What a fucked up. Duke became the number one American cigarette by 1890. And if right. it worked for cigarettes, it can work for anime. Not just anime. Like, literally anything. Right? How many of you guys know, and we're gonna get a little off topic here. How many guys know this channel? Pan Piano. And I love Pan. And I love her thumbnails even more. She creates amazing works of piano content. But you can see that the content is packaged in a way where it's marketed towards a bunch of horny kids. And if you look at the viewership, it is fucking insane. Right? Sex sells. Now, because she looks hot, right? Of course, it's going to get a lot of clicks, but that's not the only thing. You need to actually make good content after, you know, attracting the eyes. But just another example that it's not just anime. This kind of sex sells things, it exists everywhere, not just anime. Manga covers, uncensored DVDs, figures, other memorabilia. Fan service generates so much revenue for the yep. anime industry, it is absurd. Just ask you Photobull how they got their budget. Love is war. You like- How did you Photobull get their budget? Fake Grand Order, right? Because like, uh, the director has like close relations of like Type Moon people, 
right? An FGO, huge gotcha game. There's a lot of tax evasion there too, but basically just whales. People wailing on FGO is funding you foldable Demon Slayer. <laughs> Budget. Love is War. You like Love is War, right? Kaguya Sama, yeah. Everybody likes Love is Love is I love War it. released an exclusive OVA bundled with the That OVA was crazy. Love is War, there was never such degenerate fan service, right? It's a show where you don't need to rely on the fan service. Bro, there may be some depictions of fan service. It is never atrocious. There is no crazy shit happening because the content is good. But the OVA, my goodness. My goodness, that OVA was literally hentai. The 22nd volume of its manga. The OVA was basically just yeah. fan service. And guess what? That quarter sold How much? 500,000 units. More. 500k units more than the regular? Than any other before or since. Well, and it makes sense, right? It's a special time, right? It's a limited edition, and you have chica titties out. It makes a lot of sense. As long as you don't include the final volume, which is cheating. <laughs> Ew. And this bundling of fan service with stuff is a pretty common strategy for series to generate that extra little bit of income mm. kind of like your english teacher with an only fan without oh. fan service we wouldn't have nearly the same quality or quantity of anime that we enjoy today all right so here is his actual winning condition and the reason why fan service needs to exist is because of the sheer amount of money the fundraising it does such that you can get the anime now you deserve. You want good fucking anime? Well, guess what? Some miners' titties gotta get fucking groped along the way. I'm sorry, I didn't decide it. The people have decided it, and there is definitely some truth to that. And that's not even including the anime. And then there's actually ecchi anime, right? Now we're talking about actual anime where they're like, we are literally just doing fan service. And yes, Gushing Over Magical Girls does have a good plot. Let's not get, you know, let's not get it twisted. Half the fucking show is just sussy ass shit. There is literally an entire genre of anime dedicated to fan service. That yep. prototype for Evangelion, ecchi. No game, no life, also ecchi. I don't really think it should count, but Mashoka Tensei, ecchi. Here's Echi? Mushoku Tensei? Hell no. Chain Soldier? Yeah. Mushoku Tensei? Fan service is extremely tame. Like, I can't really think of like a, like, when I think about other fan service that I've seen in actual Echi shows versus Mushoku Tensei, I can't really pick out any certain scenes. Here's my favorite popular Echi and the lesser known one. Sorry, but you guys know that some people really wanted the Echi that didn't bore me to death. One, two, three columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen rows. Three times sixteen is what? Thirty plus eighteen, forty-eight. My man has seen forty-eight fucking etchies. Those lists. But fan service is so profitable that it created etchy, and etchy, in essence, is the manifestation of fan service. But what about hentai? Because like after etchy exists literal hentai. Coming its own art. Do you ever wonder why genitals are always censored in general? I actually forgot. I think I watched like a video documentary on why the Japanese industry with JAVs always censor and pixely shit. Japanese porn. Japan's hardcore censorship of art goes as far back as the 17th century Edo period. That famous period with like samurais and shit. Although back then the main goal for censorship was to control things like religion or criticism of the shogunate. Sexual okay. depictions in art were more or less a casualty. More relevant to this video is the 1907 revision to Japan's criminal code. Art Article 175, which banned the selling, distribution, or displaying of obscene content. Which is kind of vague if you ask. What happened at that time? Did a fucking Puritan church take over? Ask me. Punishable by up to two years in prison for a drawing. It gave me a rock hard Hey! <laughs> Following World War II, things got better. And while what's considered obscene has loosened considerably, and enforcement has dwindled, the law and its effects on Japanese culture remain to this day. Okay. Fan service is an act of rebellion against this law and Japan's shaming culture. I am being... All right, here's another good talking point, right? So here's the two win conditions that we've been provided so far. The first one is creates a shitload of money. 
And that's why you have the godlike animation that you see now. The second component of the wind condition of why fan service is prevalent and is important to the anime industry is it spans back to Japanese history. It's all about censorship, moderation, and this is our way of revolting against the man. I get it. I get it. Yeah, sure. 100% serious here. Fan service plays an important role in the Japanese freedom of expression. It even jumpstarts careers. You have no idea how many writers and animators, voice actors too, got their start with hentai or even hentai. Yeah. Hentai. Both for its profitability and because of a personal passion. Trust me. Dark Pixar. <laughs> Plus, anime's blunt and goofy ways of yeah. service is an aspect of what makes anime anime. It's a talking point for fans. It allows. Oh my god. That's a recent meme. This is this is a Kodos of a season three meme, bro. Right over here with the fucking what's his name? Makes Oof. anime anime. It's a talking point for. I bet he is cheating on me right now. Him. <laughs> <laughs> True gender equality and fan service. Fan. It allows for absurd premises and scenes. And at the end of the day, it's just fun. Wanting the complete annihilation of all fan service is not just. You know what? I think he is right about this, and I do agree. Wanting to. I never said that I wanted to annihilate all fan service, right? It's just like, if we do that shit, though, it does become more restrictive. We don't want to go back to those times. Of all fan service is not just most likely hypocritical, but it would also just make things Bald. boring. And if, after all of that, you still think that all fan service is evil and useless, well, that's just willful ignorance. But for everyone else. Hey, yo! Zenitsu was locked in a bit too much, entering the Infinity Castle arc. For everyone else with an IQ above room temperature that can recognize the good, the bad, and the ugly. You guys are... What the fuck was that? Hold the fuck up. Bad and the ugly. I'm not even gonna begin to want... No, I'm not gonna analyze this. You guys are cool. Almost as cool as me. Anime and as... And, and that's the video, and I would love to share this video with you guys and give you a link and say follow this channel, but it was a Reddit post. I'm not sure why it's not a YouTube video, but this is a pretty informative video. And again, going back to the initial concerns with like how much why I hate fan services, like how bad it reflects in the anime community when you want to share this hobby with other people in your normal audience. Would you be willing to share Gushing Over Magical Girls and say, you know, I love this show. You, should, you guys should watch it too through your like normie friend group or even co-workers at work? Fuck no. It's a bad look, you know? This is very <laughs> mature veteran weep content. But for sure I understand when fan service needs to exist and when it does not exist. I just hate it when fan service exists to kind of break the immersion of what's going on, but I understand why it needs to exist. The first component was the amount of money that it can make and how much of a positive effect it can have on the industry by creating such great works of animation. And then the second part has to do with history and censorship of back in the day, you know, moderation of this kind of things happened a lot. And animation fan service is just one way of revolting against the man and making sure that we have some sort of independence. But overall, this is a pretty fantastic video. I just hope my ass doesn't get a fucking community strike on this. I'll see you in the next one.